Hi friends, it's Deanna here today. And today we're going to be working on the classic camisole top and dress pattern. This is a super cute pattern and I'm excited to get to it. So let's sew it up. All right, friends, so because we're working with a woven material that sometimes tends to um, loosen up as you're sewing it and might stretch out a little bit, what we're going to do first is we're gonna put in a state stitch around the neckline and around the arm side. Um, we wanna do this so that they the fabric doesn't get all wonky or whatever when you're sewing it. Um, it's just a regular straight stitch. It can be a small straight stitch. Um, so we're gonna do that on both the back and the front. Once I do that stay stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and the first thing I'll do is my dart. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark my dart now. That way I can just go over there and sew it up at the same time. So here's my dart piece. I took out that chunk off my pattern piece and I'm gonna place it right on my bodice. This is the wrong side of the bodice and I'm using a water soluble marker and I'm just going to mark that where that it's going to be, where the dart is going to be. So I'm just marking those two sides. Just basically drawing the dart onto my dress on both sides. See, usually when we sew with knits, um, our fabric has negative ease and you'll kind of come in, but with a woven, it doesn't. So it'll have like these ripples right here because it won't just lay like um, knit fabric does. So doing darts on woven is a really nice way to give it a good shape here at the armpit area. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and stay stitch and darts. And I'm gonna show you how to do the darts. What we're going to do is here where that half is, the little peak that we drew, the little peak, and then the little peak that comes out on your sleeve. So here's the little removable piece if you had to alter it, like I just cut it out. We're gonna go ahead and essentially fold our fabric right at that peak right there and all the way in. So we're pinching, we're taking us this little sliver of fabric basically off. We're not taking it off, we're just like sewing it up so it's not even, it's like it's taking it off, like you would be taking it off, but not you're not really taking it off. Hope that makes sense. So this is what we're doing. So we're gonna grab from that corner and the top and we're gonna fold it so that it's overlapping each other. Now you're gonna need pins for this. Let me go grab my pins. And right here are my lines. So once you fold it back, fold them back, you can see here where my one line, I'm gonna grab the one side and go across to the other side on the line and pin it. And I'm gonna do the same right here. I want a long pin. So I'm gonna start here on this side and I'm gonna go back to the other side and where that line is, I'm gonna grab it and pin it. So now I know that it's folded right at the right place. Then we can grab our iron and steam it so it will stay nice for when we go to sew it. We're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew right on that line. So we're gonna sew that together. So I'm gonna do that for both sides. I'm gonna go do my stay stitch at the neck and the arm and then sew where that blue line is all the way. And start at this side and go in and come out the edge right here, leaving the little tail that we'll tie off later. I'm gonna grab my iron and steam it flat. All right, my stay stitch is done, so now we're gonna go ahead and work on that dart, and we're just gonna position it right over that line that we created, and we're gonna sew. Once those darts are done, we're gonna steam them up towards the bodies, towards the top of the bodies, and then we'll steam them down towards the bottom of the bodies. We're just giving them a really good steam. And at the end, right here, where it meets right here at the front, we're going to grab these two threads and we're just gonna give it, um, like we're gonna tie them off so they don't come undone. But we're not gonna like 
tighten it so tight that it like wrinkles the fabric and makes a little bump or nothing we're just giving them a little a couple knots to tie it off so it's not gonna come off and just clip the rest of the thread and then we're gonna give it a good steam I'm gonna steam it towards the top then I'm gonna steam it again towards the bottom so it's nice and flat and then I'm gonna go from the front and steam it again so it's got that nice steam I'm gonna leave my iron right here because we're gonna use it to I'm gonna set my bodices aside and I'm gonna work on my straps uh, and you'll have for the v-neck and for the straight back you'll have straps I'm actually um, going to be working on the V back because I figured that that's a little bit more complicated so I wanted to do that um, so I hope that that's helpful but anyway I am steaming it wrong sides together right down the middle so I'm creating like some binding straps and then I'm gonna fold them towards the inside the two sides towards the inside so that they're coming to touch that middle line and I'm gonna steam so now that they're closed in towards the middle I'm gonna go ahead and fold them again so that those raw edges are sandwich there on the inside and steam again and I'm gonna do the same for the other strap as well and once I'm done with that I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and close that strap close so on that where that edge is the open edge that will open you're gonna top stitch it down to sew it now you can top stitch on both sides so it's even it's up to you um, what look you're going for on that We're gonna grab those straps that you now have um, sewn together and I'm gonna place them, base them on the sh uh, shoulder seam, the shoulder area of my front piece. And we're gonna go over there and baste them in a minute when I head over to my machine. A basting stitch is just a long straight stitch that can be removed later when we don't need it anymore. But let me put this aside and I'm going to do that when I go over there. But while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead to our next step, which is to grab our back. If you are using the V-neck back, then the, you will do the dart for the back. But if you're not using the V-neck back and you're doing the straight back, you can move on to the next step. You can skip this step. It is not needed. But for the V-neck back, we're going to place our pattern piece right on top of our V-neck our back and we're going to do oops, I want to do it on the wrong side we're gonna do the same thing that we did. I want my pattern piece we're gonna do the same thing that we did for the front bodice like our dart on the side but this is a back dart to bring the fabric in a little bit at the back to give you a better um, for the pattern piece to fit better so I'm gonna place it right on top of the back and I'm gonna use my fabric marker or Taylor's chalk or whatever you want to use for marking that dart and I'm just basically drawing it to the fabric I'm gonna do that for both sides because there's two darts in the back now we're gonna do the same thing that we did for the front and I know it's hard to see because this fabric has got lines so what I'm I essentially doing is I'm grabbing where I marked my fabric on the one side and looking where the fabric is on the other side and I'm putting my clip, my pin right through it, right where the mark is and making sure that they match up on one side. And I'm probably gonna do it again. I'll do it again on the middle piece, right here in the middle. And then I'll do it again at the bottom so that it's matching up and then I'll grab my iron and steam it so that it stays then we'll go over to our sewing machine and we're gonna sew it together to eliminate basically that little piece right there so we're gonna start at one side go up down that line that blue line and go into the end to the end I hope that you can see that a little bit I know it's kind of hard to see because it is basically the same color as the fabric but I'm just matching up the sides, the color, the where I drew it.
on the straps I made my stitch a little bit longer for that basting stitch right here and I like them to kind of hang out a little bit at the edge just a tiny bit so that way they get trapped when I actually go to sew them in and I'm not struggling to find them uh, they don't fall down and give me a hard time later on now we're gonna work on our back and our front and we're gonna grab our facing and we're going to grab some interfacing. This is the back. I'm trying to figure out which one's the back. Okay, this is the back. Um, so you wanna probably mark it. So I'm just gonna mark that this is my back. So that way when I go to sew it on, I know exactly which one's my back and which one's my front. I'm gonna put this interfacing on here as per manual instructions of your interfacing. And you can actually make this interfacing a little bit smaller than your facing. I'm gonna cut it in half to fit it because I cut it a little bit wonky and I want it to fit on here. It's just really to give it reinforcement to the fabric that's going to go around. So you can go ahead and trim that. So that way um, when you sew it onto your bodice especially because I'm using a very lightweight fabric it's nice to have that reinforcement and it will just lay nicer I'm gonna do that put that interfacing on both the front and the back and like I said I labeled the back so that way I know exactly which one's the front and the back when I go to sew it onto my dress yes I just threw that on the ground oh. Sometimes it gets a little bit warm in my sewing room because I get a lot of natural light in here, which is glorious. I love it. But it also means that my room gets a little bit warm. So what I do is I turn my fan on, my um, ceiling fan, which is great and all, but when I'm working with pattern pieces and light woven pieces of fabric, they fly off not the best situation but it's something I'm willing to deal with for the sake of not um, getting overheated <laughs> and for the sake of having very nice natural light I could close all my windows and put drapes on my windows and it'll be nice and cool in here but I prefer the natural light especially when I'm sewing so you gotta do what you gotta do, right? That iron is kind of dangling right there. Oh my goodness, I, I just had a little moment where I thought I applied my interfacing to the right side of my fabric. You wanna apply it to the wrong side of your fabric, not the right side of your fabric. All right, now once that interfacing is applied, we want to finish the raw edge of the bottom of your facing because that's what's gonna you're gonna see that a little bit at the bottom and you don't want it to start coming unraveled so that bottom part of your facing you can do um zigzag stitch in your sewing machine you can do a serger i'm just gonna step over to my serger which has the wrong color thread so i'm gonna have to rethread it and then i'm going to uh put that raw sew that raw edge all right we're getting there are we getting excited i'm getting excited all right we're grabbing the front my straps are here and they're still here they're basted onto my front we're gonna grab the facing for the front now remember i put a little clip on the facing for the back that way it's easier to tell and we're going to align it right sides together at that raw edge the the facing and the outer for the front, we're going to sew all the way around the whole thing. We're gonna sew with a straight stitch on our sewing machine. And we're gonna go all the way around to the top of the, where the straps are. You're gonna catch that strap in there. We're gonna go to the front. We're gonna stop at the middle and pivot and go up and then over and around. So we'll sew that whole front together. And then for the back, we're going to do the same thing except for we're going to leave those shoulders open. We're not going to sew those shoulders together because we have to put our straps. One thing I forgot to show you is for those darts, you need to make sure you steam them really well. And I didn't, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. 
because I totally forgot. I went on to do the next step and I didn't steam and you want to steam. Not only do you want to steam, but you also want to tie those edges, those ends, which I did, um, we didn't need to do, we do need to do that. We do need to do that because we don't want them to come apart in the wash or anything like that. I'm steaming them towards the bodice, towards the inside, and now I'm steaming it towards the outer and then I'm gonna steam them from the other side as well so they lay nice and flat. You know, um, when you're sewing, one of the ways that you can give your garments a very nice look, like a well-made look, is by steaming. Um, steaming, it helps so much. I know that sometimes we think, we don't really need to steam, let's move on to the next step. But honestly, I'll tell you that steaming helps shape the garment and makes it look so sharp and give it a very uh, expensive, nice look, if that makes any sense. So I'm attaching them right sides together as well, all the way around except for on the shoulder seams. So I'm gonna go at the armpit up, let go, then all the neckline, let go, and then all the armpit again. I'm going to grab my scissors and just kind of clip at the fabric right here um, to kind of give it uh, a little movement so that it doesn't, uh, so that when I open it, my, my seam won't be like super bulky. But you don't want to cut the threads. So when you're doing that, do it slowly so that you do not cut the threads. Now I'm grabbing my iron and steaming that seam allowance up towards the bodice because what we're going to do next is under stitch that seam allowance. So what that means is that we want to sew that seam allowance to the facing. So that way when our bodice doesn't, our facing doesn't try to come up. So what I'll do is I'm going to, as I'm, hold on, let me trim all these. As I'm going to go to my, I'll go to my sewing machine once I'm done steaming it and I'm going to kind of tug at that seam right here and I'm going to make a top stitching right along that edge, grabbing that seam in the back and attaching it to the facing, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna, that's for un, my under stitching. You can see right here, those stitches, those are my stay stitches I'll remove later, but I'm just going all the way along that edge, all the way around the whole thing and under stitching that. Once we're done under stitching, we're gonna turn all those pieces right side out. Remember that the back straps don't have, are not sewn in yet. We'll do that in a minute. Actually, let's leave those like that because you're going to put your strap through. So we're gonna grab, whoops, I don't want that to fall. We're gonna grab it and match our front and our back. Make sure that your straps are not twisted and they're matching right sides together. Now, if you're doing pockets, you would go ahead and place your pockets on there first, sew them on first. I am not doing pockets on this one. I find that when a dress doesn't have a, a seam at the waist, I don't like to add pockets because I feel like they just add more bulk. Um, I know that's unpopular opinion. I love pockets and I know most people love pockets, but Sometimes I don't. But um, if you do want to add pockets to this, you certainly can. And you can check out our, um, there's a video here on our channel on how do I add side pockets. And that's how you would do it. You would add them where the markings are on your pattern. So you can go check that out if you need help adding pockets. Since I'm not adding pockets though, I'm just gonna go straight down the side. So I'm gonna start here with the facing. I'm gonna pull that facing up and match those raw edges. And the great thing is now when I pull the facing down after I sew it, then those seams will be hidden in there. And then I'm gonna match those raw edges. Now for the straps, so I'm gonna do that for both sides and then I'm gonna sew them together and then finish them off with whatever you wanna do, zigzag stitch or your serger to finish those raw edges so they won't come apart. For my straps, you need to make sure that they're right sides 
right side out so that's they're gonna go into my um, casing right here not my casing my my strap and you want to make sure that you're gonna just well for now you're just gonna go ahead and base them on first on here and the reason being is because you want to go try them on first before you sew them for sure for sure for sure for sure you want to make sure that they um they fit correctly you know according to your body you know if it's if they're too short uh they're if they're too long or whatever and you want to change them a little bit you can do that and that's best done after you know you don't want to try it on and then them not be the right size and you already sew them on then you have to pin them off or um, what is the word see them rip them off so you're just gonna baste those so at the same time that i'm sewing the sides together i'm gonna go baste those straps on i just tucked them in there to the to that casing where we left it open at the shoulders and then i'm gonna go all the way down the side sewing those sides together of my dress now obviously if you have a um, pocket you're going to go down around the pocket and all the way down but I don't have a pocket like I said so I'm just going all the way down all right we're almost done all right once we're done with that we're gonna flip this right over and we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and stitch right there on the on the stitch line on the ditch right there to baste to put these two together then you're gonna try your dress on and once if you see that it fits then you're gonna go back and sew those straps on if the strap is a little bit too long then you can tighten them a little bit depending on on if it how it fits and then we're gonna go ahead and hem now there is the option of the maxi so if you do want to make the maxi um, part of this dress you can go ahead and do that you can actually follow the instructions of our it really is just sewing them together and then gathering it and attaching it so you could follow the instructions of the stication dress because that's a tiered dress but I think I'm gonna stick with this length I think that that's what I want for this pattern so I'm gonna that's all gonna all I'm gonna do today so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and sew that little stitch right there then I'm going to hem it and then we're gonna try it on so I can show you just how cute it looks to hem this dress you can either go on and do a um, zigzag stitch or a serger edge and serge your raw edge and then fold up or you can fold up a quarter inch and then fold up another quarter inch and then that way you can hem it that way as well because it is a uh, woven fabric you cannot leave it just um, raw or you can't just have a um, just one fold hem so that's why you have to fold it twice I like the way that it looks that with the double fold better than with the uh, serge edge but that really is up to you whatever you want to do All right, friends, we are done with this cute little dress, this camisole. I think it looks adorable. It's super sweet and super comfy. I love it just as is, but I also love, I think the maxi would be super cute, and this would make an adorable top as well. So simple to just throw on and head out the door. I think adding a jean jacket too for those cooler months would be great as well. I think it looks super adorable, and it makes it a little bit cozier for those cooler uh, months but anyway i hope you enjoyed this tutorial please comment like share subscribe if you haven't uh, so you never miss any of our tutorials come gra go grab this pattern the link is going to be below find it at elianmac.com and consult up with me and let me know if you have any questions and i'll see you all next time bye